According to the scripture, God is the creator of all, and every known life on earth has been a gift from God since the beginning of time, and we have been created in His image from the dust of the earth. Our life since then is lived in accordance with God's purposes, making each human life equally sacred and unique. Therefore, it is to believe that the human life is indeed a gift from God that must be protected and cherished at all costs. In the Bible, the world was created into existence through the voice of God as it states in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the rest followed as the animals and the plants were created. God saw that everything was good. He then wanted someone to care for His creation, someone that would dominate or have authority over His creation. That was when God thought and said, Let us make humans. From the verse Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 as it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living soul. Humankind was then made different from the rest of God's creation as it says in the Bible that human beings were made accordingly to God's own image. And together with the creation of humankind, God gave them free will, rationality, emotions, soul, and spirit, allowing men and women to have a personal relationship with God. He gave the sense of spirituality and self for us to be largely incomparable from our physical existence that is not seen in His other creations. So ever since then, men and women do not own themselves, contrary to popular opinion and materialistic ideas. Personal sovereignty, human liberty, and unrestricted choice beyond the bounds of God's rules are all illusions. They ultimately result in poverty, aimlessness, and separation from God. However, whatever is created by the Lord is still seen as precious and significant. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20, it says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own, you were brought at a price. Human life is indeed precious, according to the meaning of this passage, because it ultimately belongs to God. Our bodies were formed to reflect His glory, and it is our responsibility to appreciate and care for what He has created within us. Our bodies are not owned by us, but it is given to us as a loan by God, making it still a property of God. And with this, God expects us to do good with it and care for other creations. God declares His dominion over all aspects of human life in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. See now that I myself am He, there is no God besides me, I put to death and I bring to life. We are not determining who lives and who dies when we make an end-of-life decision. That is something which God does. Christians see their roles as stewards of both resources and lives, and as a response, they'll make decisions as stewards of God's resources rather than as life, and will make choices that are in accordance with God's will. For that reason, it is not the will of God for us to take a life, and we will not make decisions that will cause the end of a person's life. We aim to be purposeful representatives of God's love and compassion for individuals who find themselves in tough, undesirable situations, as well as those who experience pain as a result of disease, accident, injustice, or abuse, 
because human life is holy. We shall make every effort to improve these situations, to love our neighbors as ourselves, and to offer God's invitation to find meaning and purpose in life through a personal connection with Him, through faith in Jesus Christ. God has given us a reason to live and do many good. We should live through Christ's glory by spending every day of our lives proclaiming the good news and celebrating the goodness of living. The church also enacted on informing the public about the sanctity of life. This is to spread the word of the Lord about its importance and impact in our lives. Evangelium Vitae meaning the Gospel of Life, was promulgated on March 25, 1995 by Pope John Paul II in Rome, Italy. This document was written to reiterate the view of the Roman Catholic Church on the value of life and to warn against violating the sanctity of life. The document focuses on right-to-life issues including abortion, birth control, and euthanasia, but also touches on other concepts relevant to embryology such as contraceptions, vetro fertilization, sterilization, embryotic cell research, and fetal experimentation. But responsibility, likewise, falls on the legislators who have promoted and approved abortion laws and to the extent that they have a say in the matter on the administrators of the healthcare centers where abortions are performed. Laws which legitimize the direct killing of innocent human beings through abortion or euthanasia are in complete opposition to the inviolable right to life proper to every individual. They thus deny the equality of everyone before the law. There are also quotes from church documents on issues of human life. This shows that the people of God are truly doing everything that they can in order to inform the public about the sanctity of life. With this, we are guided on our beliefs and perception about the issues at hand. Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith doctrinal note on some questions regarding the participation of Catholics in political life, 2002, number 4, states that those who are directly involved in lawmaking bodies have a grave and clear obligation to oppose any law that attacks human life. The inviolability of the person, which is a reflection of the absolute inviolability of God, finds its primary and fundamental expression in inviolability of human life. The first right of the human person is his life. He has other goods and some are more precious, but this one is fundamental, the condition of all the others. Hence, it must be protected above all others. In a nutshell, the sanctity of life or inviolability of life means we, as Christians, should protect our lives and treat our bodies right because it is sacred. We must never violate ourselves for our body is the temple of God.